you have to be crazy to do this. You just have to be a little bit crazy. I think this was a preservation North Carolina house. The person who built the house was James Fuller. He, so it's called the Fuller House, um, though I initially named it Parmafe, which is an obscure 70s reference, and then it became Matimba, which is Swahili for monster they eat to my bank account. And then when we started doing the structural, we realized there was nothing holding up the house except maybe invisible hooks that connected to the sky, so we called it Skyhook. And so, but all three names spell out PMS, and so we're keeping them. From the records, my mother was Dutch. Um, she was an au pair, um, and um, she had, I guess, finished her job with whatever family she was with in New York, and she was at an employment agency where she met my father, who was African-American and much older. He was 44, and I think she was 27. Um, and they met, and they fell in love, and they had me, except, you know, this is 1962, and, you know, miscegenation laws were still in the books in, I don't know, 20 states, maybe? And so they gave me up for adoption. I was raised in New York. I'm one of six kids. Um, my parents are African American, and they adopted six mixed kids in the early 60s, um, and they adopted all six of us. Actually, my mother probably would have adopted more, but my dad put his foot down at six. The bad things about working on a house is it's all sort of boot work. It's no fine, pretty stuff. When I first got here, I was just surprised at what the triangle was like. And I've just always had a soft spot for Duke because you would expect, you know, a conservative Southern institution to be sort of Southern and conservative. Um, but I was always welcome here. And being gay and African American, you know, you don't expect to be welcome at a Southern conservative institution. But um, they always went to bat for me. Um, I was very, very, very happy here. Everyone shook their heads, you know, but most people who know me and love me know that really once I get a hold of an idea, there's really no stopping me. Even it's as patently foolish as buying a 1918 house with severe structural damage. I mean, it, it seems impossible, and the beginning was really, really hard. You know, it was just, you'd, you'd kind of lie in bed and just put the covers over your head because you really didn't want to get out of bed and kind of face it. And, uh, but it, it, it gets easier. And there was just always help, and it just comes out of nowhere, and at the most unexpected places. So we have to find a mud ring to bring it out to there, and then pass the wall. But one GFCI in. I have to force myself to work inside because I have a lot more fun in the garden. And one of the carrots for finishing the house is that then I can devote all of my time to the garden. And I've just always loved plants. Um, and I'm good with them. I'm really, I could make almost anything grow. Though the big thing, even more than the price of the house, was the designation as a historic district. Because um, it also means the character of the neighborhood can't change. Um, and, and that's really important because in a lot of places, especially like where I, I, where I was raised in Queens, when I mean, people are tearing down all the old houses and they tend to be kind of on the small side and building these ugly monstrosities. And I knew that in a designated historic district that wasn't going to happen. And everything else about East Durham was a bonus. I mean, you know, I just, I, I knew it was a great house. I knew it was a historic district. That's all I knew. Um, but then even before I bought the house, I met many of my neighbors and, and crime hasn't been an issue. Um, I certainly feel very, very safe here. Um, I walk a lot since I don't drive, and so it's always funny because, you know, there are certain places you walk through, and then once you get to a certain point, for some reason, you feel like you're home. And for me, that's Austin Avenue. If I got past Austin Avenue, for probably because, you know, that stretch between downtown and Austin is kind of deserted, especially at night. So if you walk in at night, it's a little creepy. But once I get past Austin Avenue, you know, I know that, eh, I'm home. I'm in the neighborhood. Everyone knows me. It's no problem. Um, and that's it. Mm -hmm.